Hello students. Welcome to lecture one of class 10 ICSC computer application course. Before we start, I would like to give you some features of this course. This is Vigyan series. It is providing a complete course for ICSC class nine and 10 computer applications, wherein the concepts will be dealt up in depth with a lot of practice questions and uh, weekly live doubt sessions. So you can enroll because now the discount offered is too high. For enrolling, you can download the Beast Learner app or you can visit the mentioned site in this slide. So now we start our uh, lecture one, which is about revision of class nine syllabus. Now, before we start the syllabus, I would like to just make it clear that if you're confident of all class nine syllabus, if your concepts are clear, then you can just take up class 10 course. But uh, if you feel that uh, your class nine was not up to the mark or some concepts need to be clarified, then I would advise you to take up class nine course because you know, class nine is a basic foundation for your programming. So please uh, decide accordingly. So let's begin our class, the lecture one. So in this uh, lesson, revision of class nine syllabus, I will be taking four class lectures. The first lecture will deal with, the first lecture here, we will be uh, trying to understand and revise introduction to OOP introduction to object oriented programming the objects classes the oops principles etc right and in lecture 2 we will be dealing with the fundamental basic concepts for example the, the character set then the tokens which involve your variables, constants, identifiers, operators, operands, expressions, then data types, also type conversion, uh, and lot more. Okay. And in lecture three, this will deal with conditional construct, which will involve if switch and the ternary operator. And in lecture four, we will deal with iterative construct statements involving for, while, do while, along with jump statements, which include your break and continue statements. So this is the overall introduction of what I'm going to teach you in uh, revision of class nine syllabus. But all these concepts will be just revised, will not be done in depth as we have done it in class nine. Okay, yes, so let's start. Yes, so this is, the, the first lecture, which will deal with the following concepts, which you can see on the screen. So first comes programming languages. See, all the programming languages are based on some popular programming paradigm. So the two programming paradigm, which basically means the style or way of 
developing a program. The two of them are POP, that is procedure oriented model. And the second one is OOP, object oriented programming model. Now, all of you know that Java is an object oriented model. And all the languages which were developed uh, before uh, C++, like C, basic, all these are based on POP model. Fine. So you should know the basic difference between POP and object-oriented programming model. Right. So let's revise it in a short. See, basically, the two important elements of the program are code and data. The POP model focuses more on code, whereas OOP focuses more on data. That's the very first difference between them. Secondly, in POP, you have the access. This uh, OOP has access specifier concept. In Java, there are four access specifiers, public, private, protected. And if you do not write anything, it will be considered as default. Whereas this is not present in POP model. Therefore, the security is compromised in a POP model. Whereas in OOP, security is provided, right? And then POP model follows top-down approach. Whereas OOP model follows modular approach. And because of the modular approach, the code modification becomes simple here. Is simple. Whereas it is complex in case of POP model. And then OOP supports data extensibility. What do, what do you mean by extensibility? See, it's nothing but ability to create new data types from the primitive data types, which is supported in OOP. That's why you have uh, you know, the non-primitive data types in, in Java, like uh, your arrays, okay? String you must have used. So string is derived from cat the primitive data type tag. Thus, OOP supports data extensibility, whereas it is not supported in POP. So you need to know the basic differences between the two models. That's it. Hope it is clear. So let's move on to the next topic. Yes, objects. Now, what do you understand by object? So let's understand it through a real example first. See, all objects have three characteristics. All objects have three characteristics. That is state, which is represented through attribute and values. Okay, so state is basically it presents the physical characteristics of an object, okay? Second characteristic is behavior. Behavior, the behavior represents the task performed by an object, okay? And the third one is the unique identity, which makes an object distinct or unique. Now, if I take an example of a fan, suppose. So in case of fan, you can say the state uh, through, you know, the color of the fan is white. The brand is some uh, Usha fan and so many. Whereas the behavior part, what task it performs, it basically rotates thereby giving air and all that. And uh, UI, the unique identity can be 
its uh, you know, receipt number or something like that. Okay, so this is with respect to a real object. Now, if you consider the software object, software object like your programs. So in your programs, this state is achieved through the use of variables. Right, for example, you're dealing with a program on student. Now, in that program, you might be using the variables like roll number one, marks is equal to 100, uh, name is equal to some X, Y, Z, right? So state is achieved through the use of variables and behavior is the task performed. So in a software object, behavior is implemented through the use of methods or functions, okay? So just remember that all objects have three characteristics, state, behavior, unique identity. State refers to physical characteristics, behavior represents the task performed, and in software object, state is achieved through the use of variables, and behavior is implemented through the use of methods or functions. Hope it is clear, fine. So the next topic is uh, class. So now class and object have uh, a relation which I would like to give you through an example. For example, what relation you have between, uh, you know, for example, furniture. And if I say chair, stool, bed, etc. Okay. Or if I say, um, if I say a real uh, example like uh, fruit or a bird, you know, under bird you have a sparrow, peacock, parrot, etc. Right, fruit, apple, mango, etc. Now, what relation? these things have with this, the same relation a class has with its object. Now out of this, class is just a logical entity which represents all the physical characteristics and the behavior represented by all its object. So out of class and object, which one physically exists? Yes, it is the object which physically exists or gets a memory space, right? Class is just a logical entity or you say class is a blueprint or a model, a template, or you also say class is an object factory. Once you create a class, you can create as many objects as required. Hence, class is also known as object factory, okay? Fine, so the next you have OOP principles. Yes, these are the, there are four principles that is abstraction, encapsulation, and uh, inheritance, and polymorphism. So all these uh, principles are discussed in detail in class nine. So you must have uh, remembered that encapsulation provides data security and is practically implemented through a class, right? Whereas inheritance provides, uh, the it actually supports the idea of code reusability, fine? And this polymorphism is practically implemented in Java through function overloading. So just revise all these things once again. So now let's move on to the next topic. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so let's uh, know a little bit more about Java, right? So as you know, Java was uh, developed by James Gosling 
1991. Initially, it was named Oak. Later, it was renamed as Java. Fine. Now, yeah, the Java platform. The Java platform basically consists of JVM and API. Yes, this API is nothing but the Java core libraries, which includes different packages. And what does these packages contain? Group of classes. And what does these classes contain? Group of methods. Fine. So there are several inbuilt methods which are stored in one of the class, which in turn is present in a package. And all these packages are placed in API. So API stands for Application Programming Interface. And then you have JVM, which is Java Virtual Machine, the interpreter. So Java platform consists of JVM and API, right? Then coming to phases of program execution in Java. You might be knowing that Java programs are both compiled and interpreted. Generally, you know, there are this high level languages are either compiled or interpreted into machine language. The compiler checks the entire source code at once, whereas interpreter checks it line by line. Okay, but Java is special. Java programs, okay, or you can say the source code. The source code is first compiled by a compiler into byte code, which is then interpreted by an interpreter. And what is Java's interpreter? It is JVM. So JVM converts byte code into object code. Got it? The source code is nothing but your program written in any high level language. Okay, and bytecode is the intermediate code which you get after compiling the source code. And then this bytecode is interpreted by JVM into object code, which is nothing but the machine code or the binary code. Yes. So if any question is asked related to source code, byte code, object code, uh, you can just explain it through this clearly. Got it? So hope this is clear. Then comes JVM, JRE, and JDK. Now, just in a easy way, you can just remember it like this. JVM is a subset of JRE is a subset of JDB. Now, all of you know what JVM is. It's an interpreter, right? Now, what is JRE? JRE is nothing but JVM plus API, which I explained you before. Okay. And then comes JDK. JDK is nothing but JRE plus some development tools, development tools like debugger, compiler, etc. Okay, so you can just remember it this way. And then comes the features of Java. The Java has many features. The most important among them is it is object oriented, OP. And then it is both compiled and interpreted. Third is it is portable and platform independent. It is dynamic. It is robust, etc. There are so many features. And because of this bytecode thing, the Java gets the features that is a bytecode. It's, it's portable and platform independent because of the intermediate code called bytecode. 
fine. And then the last topic is blue jay. Now, what is this? This is nothing but an IDE, the Integrated Development Environment. Now you have several other environments where you can execute your Java programs. Okay, for example, Eclipse, IntelliJ, NetBeans, etc. So BlueJ is one of them. It is mostly suitable for beginners, the students because of its user-friendly nature. That's why it is uh, introduced for ICSE student level. So this completes your lecture one. With this, we come to the end of today's class. So we will continue with the lecture two, wherein I will be discussing about the basic features of the language, starting with character set, tokens, uh, different type of, you know, tokens contain so many uh, examples like variables, constants, operators, the different type of operators like uh, logical, arithmetic, increment, decrement, assignment, shorthand, and so on. The data types. So these are the basic concepts. So please uh, be ready with uh, for the second lecture next class. Thank you, everyone.